what's up guys? Mike here, coming at you from the Mushroom Farm. Great video for you guys today. So today, we're gonna be talking about Cordyceps Liquid Culture, all right? I've got Liquid Culture from two awesome Cordyceps vendors, and I'm making some of my own Liquid Culture here on the farm just by expanding this. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Liquid Culture recipe I'm using for my Cordyceps Militaris grow. Those of you who don't know, my name's Mike. I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years as my full-time job. Here's just a few clips of some of my recent grows, some of my recent harvests. So if you're into mushrooms and farming, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. Now anyway, as far as cordyceps grows, I've grown cordyceps before in the past. Here's just a clip of some of the small cordyceps grows that I've done. Usually I've done jar style, okay? But now that I've got my farm here in Colorado, I'm mainly a gourmet grower. My farmer's markets and the restaurants here I'm selling to seasonally. We're basically growing the gourmet mushrooms seasonally here, and we're focusing on medicinal mushrooms over the winter. So now that I have the opportunity to really kind of like sit down and focus on cordyceps, I'm going to use this time to really get good at commercial cordyceps cultivation. So we're trying some tray style grows. Here's just a few pictures of some of the trays that I've put together. So I've made a little over 30 of these trays right now. I've got six different recipes I'm trying, and we're just trying to see what is the most efficient recipe for me to use here on my farm. Basically, what are the most cost-effective ingredients? What's the biggest yield we're getting? So we're testing all that. We're also testing to see like how much LC we're gonna use going to bulk. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about the tests I've got running there. And I'm basically gonna give you a recipe today about how I'm expanding this liquid culture. So you can go to Terrestrial Fungi's website and there's liquid culture recipes there. Jeff Manganero, he has recipes as well and you guys can follow those recipes. But pretty much any good liquid culture recipe will work for cordyceps. If you follow, I follow a basic 4% nutrient solution and I basically have 35 grams of dextrose per one liter of water. And I also put one gram of peptone, one to two grams of peptone is good and then also one to two grams of light malt extract, okay, or light malt. So basically 35 grams dextrose, one to two grams peptone, one to two grams light malt, all in 1,000 milliliters of water. You can make about two jars from that mixture then, but I just keep blending up the nutrients and I'll just keep filling the jars up. And I made a big batch, obviously, as you can see, but those ingredients right there, you need the sugar source in there. They like fast sugars. They like a little bit of malt. Some people put more malt in, but you can do whatever you want. And that peptone is just really good just to enhance the growth of the mycelium. All of my trays colonized super fast. I mean, within like four days. So it, my liquid culture that I just inoculated these with was highly effective and it worked really well for me. So I have pretty much the same thing going on right now. And I'm going to basically expand these right now 10x. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick one of these syringes out of here. And I've already wiped off my injection port and I'm just gonna inject one cc, basically, or one milliliter into each jar. And I'm gonna use the same needle. I'm going to flame sterilize my needle in between each jar, okay? But that's the basic procedure. So one of those syringes can go a long way. And I'm pretty sure I've even seen guys inoculate half gallon jars with one cc. I've personally never tried it. I'll have to try it in the future, maybe next season when I do another giant batch. Because right now, by the time I use all of the liquid cultures that I'm making here, the ones that I'm ordering, because I ordered just a few more too, we're gonna be having over 200, maybe 300 trays here of cordyceps growing on the farm. So I'm gonna have a whole lot of cordyceps growing and I don't really need to make any more after this. So now just a couple more things about these cordyceps liquid cultures. If you order these things and you don't use them right away, you wanna keep them sealed. In darkness, I actually had like an old coffee can, so I put them in a coffee can, and then I stuck them in my walk-in cooler or put them in refrigeration. But basically, you want to refrigerate them and you want to keep them dark. The light triggers them somehow. I don't really know all the ins and outs about that, but I do know you do want to keep them dark until you're ready to use them. You use them, and I'll tell you, after you inoculate these, it's also recommended that you take your jars and you keep your jars of liquid culture in complete darkness, okay? And I'll take the jars out once a day and I'll basically stir it up once a day, okay? These cordyceps cultures are crazy, okay? They get super thick, super fast, so they do require daily stirring. The first day you might be like, what am I doing this for or whatever? But then you'll know by day two, you'll start to see stuff growing right away and you'll be like, oh boy. And then you just keep stirring it every single day, make sure you're stirring your liquid culture. Usually in like five to seven days, they're about ready to use. You wanna use them 
different people use them in different zones. You, like you always want to kind of look at the culture. You want that culture to like start looking pretty thick for sure. If it's constantly growing over the top and it's like forming, I believe it's called a pellicle is the term for that. But basically if it's making like a hockey puck, it's starting to really form up a lot of mycelium on the top there. You need to use that culture. It's time to use that culture. And honestly, by the time these things get to like day five, it starts to happen pretty much almost all the time. So you got to constantly stir that thing around day seven. A lot of people like the seven to 10 day window. Okay. I pretty much use all my cultures, try to use them around day seven. Personally, I have pretty good results with that. But they start getting really thick, really chunky. So beyond 10 days, I wouldn't really say they're too viable. So you need to use them right away. But anyway, they need to be stored in darkness until you're going to use them, okay? And then anyway, after you inoculate your bags then, because basically I cook, I sterilize the six pound of rice bag, I let them cool, and then I'll inoculate them. Like I said, I've been doing tests um, I've done like 250 milliliters and I've also done the five to 600 milliliters, like just dump the whole thing in. So I've done it both ways and we'll see actually like what works the best, I think, for these style trays. And we'll, we'll figure it all out here within the next few weeks. But that's kind of my basic procedure. And then when I make the trays, the trays are also supposed to be stored in complete darkness for about four days. And then you can uncover them and then just expose them to light. Some people do 12-12, some people keep the lights on 24 hours, but it doesn't really matter too much there. And as far as the keeping it dark, to my knowledge, that's like the recommended route right now, okay? If anything ever changes with that, I'll let you guys know. But if you ex if the mycelium is exposed to light early, it can grow funny, and you might get what's called overlay problems with the mycelium, and it may decrease your yield. So that's the whole thing about the darkness with these. I don't do that with my other gourmet mushrooms, but I am doing that with this batch of cordyceps, just because we're doing a real big batch right away. But anyway, now let's kind of talk about these recipes that I've got going on and some of the cordyceps tests I'm doing. Okay, so I got my notes here, and basically I've got stuff that I've written here, like how many bags of everything that I've done. I've got the ingredients on here for all my batches. I've labeled all my bags. I'm trying six different recipes, basically, and just because I'm trying to simplify the recipes and get ingredients that work well for me, ones that are like cost-effective, ones you can source easily, and I don't like too complicated of a recipe because like the more things you got going on, it's just, uh, it's a lot of things you got to keep track of and this and that. So the simpler, the better a lot of times. But anyway, check out Terrestrial Fungi's recipe. You can check out other YouTubers' recipes too. Jeff Manganaro, uh, he gives recipes too. But this is what I'm testing right now. Basically, I have six batches going. Batch number one, I did three parts brown rice, one part soybean meal, and then I basically put in a scoop. I've got this one scoop that I'm using over here of yeast uh, extract, light malt extract, and then I did that all in 1,000 milliliters of water, okay? And when I say a scoop, it's about two tablespoons or so. And my second batch, I used 1,600 milliliters rice, 400 milliliters soybean meal, so I did four parts brown rice, one part soybean meal, and then I just put one scoop of light malt extract, so about two tablespoons of light malt extract in that one, and 1,000 milliliters of water. I also try to batch with eggs, okay? So I did 2,000 milliliters of brown rice, so just straight brown rice, six whole eggs. I did basically two tablespoons of yeast, two tablespoons of light malt extract, and that yeast, it's a, it's a yeast extract. You can also use nutritional yeast. Some guys use nutritional yeast as well. Another batch I put together, I put together 2,000 milliliters brown rice. I used 170 grams whole egg powder. I got this recipe from uh, Renegade Mushrooms, by the way, or a similar one. He actually used brown rice flour. I decided to use whole brown rice because I had a whole lot here, and the 170 grams egg powder. In his recipe, he says one cup egg powder, and then this is for 1,000 milliliters of water. And I just want to say, the egg powder, putting that bag together, it actually did feel really good. Everything mixed together well. The uh, It is not very cost effective, though egg powder is so expensive so like out of all of these batches that was the most pricey batch and well I'm testing it just because we want I want to have like a good constant test for everything so we know exactly how each different substrate can perform and we'll know um, basically how they compare to other ones but I did do that test although I don't really think it's going to be a commercially viable method I want to say that third batch that I talked about where I used the whole eggs I didn't really like the way that substrate broke up when I cooked it in my pressure cooker. I know some guys do this rice cooker tech. 
it might be easier to mix then and it might just kind of work better i'm not quite sure i've never used the rice cooker or an instapot for this but i just want to say that batch i made with the whole eggs and the pressure cooker i'm going to do it one more time but it was super tough to break that uh substrate it was just really it was like a rock dude but we got it broken up and it, it's colonizing nice actually but i don't know kind of not one of my favorite recipes Let's see if i get this page turned okay the other one that i have here basically i did a batch 2000 milliliters brown rice one scoop or two tablespoons light malt extract two tablespoons yeast extract with 1000 milliliters water this is the spore and sprout recipe now spore and sprout put together a like simple cordyceps like how-to tutorial that is a really slick recipe so we're going to see how that one performs they do good in his video so we'll see how i do here with these cultures and that specific recipe now batch number six this is the one i'm actually the most excited about i used 1600 milliliters brown rice so four parts brown rice one part soybean meal and that's it okay so if and then a thousand milliliters water so if that one works out and it's colonizing really nice right now that is the simplest recipe that i have on here and this soybean meal, I haven't seen that in too many other cordyceps recipes. Actually, I've never seen it in a U.S. grower's cordyceps recipe. I found that out from a Chinese grower, actually, on YouTube. I was just kind of going through YouTube, watching YouTube videos, kind of researching cordyceps. And I saw this guy, basically, he had a bowl, and it was brown rice, and he said it was soy. And they didn't say exactly what it was, but it looked exactly like soybean meal. So I was like, wow, okay, that's pretty cool. And I figured I needed to try it. If you look up the nutrition on soybean meal, I'll just kind of show you guys. Here's, I'll just show you a quick Google clip. This is what's in like 100 grams of soybean meal. So there's like a lot of protein, a lot of good carbohydrates in there. Basically a lot of stuff that Cordyceps going to want. So I'm stoked to see how this one's going to work out because that's kind of my favorite recipe of the batch. But we got to do all the tests and see which one's going to work out the best. But anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, just drop it down below in that comment section. If you guys have any videos you'd like me to make for you or anything like that, just drop it down below in that comment section. But hopefully you found this helpful and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.